so much. So sorry. Um. So I I won't be using my camera. So it's dark here. So thank you. Um. Okay. I'm Biliki So once again. So I'll be taking the session for today. So um. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Um, so today we're going to be looking at chapter two of the book Mastering Shiny, uh, written by Hadley Wickham. So I'm going to be using the slides that we have for the book club. So um, and I'll also be referring to a project that I've used based on this chapter. So um, I hope that would help as well. So um, without taking much of our time, I'll go through this. So um, for the basic UI, chapter two of the book, it's all about the user interface. We have two sides to um, Shiny application. We have the server side, we have the user interface as well. So those two sides, so we are looking at the UI today. So it has three components. There is the input. We have various types of inputs here, the text, numeric variables, dates, radio buttons, check boxes, file uploads down, then we have also the buttons. So for the output, we have the text as well. So we have tables, we have plots, then downloads. So we're going to be looking at the layout functions as well. So we'll, we'll get through to see some aspect of the layout. So I'll go to the next slide. So we have information about the book itself. So the link is here. Then we also have the link to the Mastering Shiny GitHub repo for this um, book club. I think no, for the book as well. Then we have that for the book club. So then we also have the cheat sheet for Shiny. Okay, sorry, are you with us? We we don't hear you. Could you join like uh, with, with just audio? Okay, sorry. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. We are hearing you. Okay. So I could, uh, if if you if you couldn't like if your if your internet connection is not that good, I could okay. share my. Yeah, I think. Yes, please kindly share your screen. Then I would uh, yeah. switch if I have to use the R Studio here. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Um, let's see. So could you like uh, not sharing your screen? I think you're sharing your screen now. Okay. Okay, you can go ahead and share the screen. Okay, now let's share it. Are you seeing my screen now? Yeah, we see it. Sure. So we could continue now. Okay. Yes, I can see your screen now. So I think the next slide. Okay. 
Next one. Okay, okay, thank you so much. Um, so the shiny basic user interface is all about um the UI, but before we go into the main UI, we'll look at the recall. So the simplest um shiny applications has two components, UI and server. So the user interface contains nested R functions that assist in assembling the HTML. Okay, what do we mean? Uh, but this statement is that the UI has its components from the R side, but um, the Shiny application actually generates the HTML components um, when you try to kind of run the app. So for any UI or any UI component that is created, you have the HTML or the web um, functions equivalent to it that is produced when you run the app. So when you create a basic um, Shiny application, this is what you have. You have um, the function that creates the UI itself. You can create that with so many functions now. So for this um, instance, we are using the fluid page function to create the user interface while we also have the server side, which we're not looking at today. So that's going to be using a function that has other components about it. So we're not going to go too much into that. So then when we look at the naming, so the naming um, syntax for the UI components or the UI function is you need the input ID. So the input ID are two constraints. So it has to contain only letters, numbers, and underscore. You don't include backslash or any other special um, characters that we have on our normal system keyboard or something. So we don't need that. So then the input ID also must be unique. It has to be unique. Um, you can have multiple um, functions for the UI components, but every or every um, UI component or controls that you might want to call it has to have its own name that is different from the others. So because this is what's going to be referenced in the server side. So um, we'll look at the next slide now. So what can one input? What can we input into our shiny user interface? There are six um, kind of input controls that we have. We have the text for strings. We have the numeric variables. So um, we have dates, limited choices, like where we use radio buttons, check boxes, select drop down menus, and so on. So then we also have file uploads, then the action button. So if we look at the um, the code chunk here, it's a general form for you to be able to create a control. So any control or input command that you want to create has to have the input ID as well as the label. So what Hadley Wickham um, suggested in the book is that for the first two arguments that you're going to have in the function that is going to create these controls, you don't have to give the name to the arguments for the input ID and the label. So you can just give a string for the ID and also a string for the label, then followed by a comma. You can now give named arguments for the other um, arguments in the for the control to be created. So it's optional for you to give the named um, argument for the input ID and the label. So it's optional. It, the control or shiny automatically understands that the first and the second arguments belongs to the input ID and the label. That's what the book says. Then we also have the other arguments here. So this um, situation, the, the, the comment here says situation depends, dependent variables. So it's not for all controls that you have all these arguments available. So it can vary from one control to another, from control to another, or the input function to another. So you might not get all this for all 
situation. So we have the value, the minimum, maximum values, um, the columns, the rows, and so on and so forth. So, but just know that you wouldn't be having all this for all the controls or the input um, controls. Okay, so um, the first uh, input now, um, sorry. So the first input is, okay, so I can, let me see that, okay, I'm mixing that. Okay, so the input there now is for the text and the numeric um, values. So every output in the UI is coupled with a render in the server side. So what we're talking about here is that for every control or input function that we have at the UI side, there is always another render function at the server side. We know that, okay, Shiny is built on two components, the UI and the server side. So for communication purpose, they have to, there has to be a render function in the server side um, window that we will be looking at in the future. So for the text and the numeric um, values, we have the text input. So we're going to have the input ID, just like we said, the, the this one is going to be the F underscore name. Then the label will give it something meaningful that uh, the user of your shiny application would make sense of. So that's also stated in the book that, okay, for whatever is going to be the label should be something that is understandable to humans. So you don't just give anything. You don't have to give something that like what you have in the input ID for your um kind of the label. So the same thing goes for the text input here. The input ID here, you can see it's different from the first one. This is a name. Then the play, it has a different, uh, an additional um, argument that is the placeholder. So this gives you more information on to how to use this, uh, use the control and what is required of you. So what's your need? That is something that you will see in the box. So I'll show you uh, this in my R Studio later. So, but let's just go through and now we'll see what I can do about that. So um, so the next thing is the numeric inputs. So we have one that is having the input ID as X. So the label is dependent variable. So and it has a value of 10. So if you are going to have any input that or like this numeric value inputs now, the default value that you're going to see there is going to be 10. So, but you can add more information, any number that you want there. Then we have the slider inputs. So it has the ID, Y underscore range, then the label is range of Y, then the values ranges from 10 to 20. So the minimum value is zero, then the, um, the maximum value is 100. So you can add more values and just get through the range. The max is going to be 100 now. So this is what we're going to have. The value that you see here is going to be the default that you're going to see when the app is launched. So then the second um, category is going to be the dates, limited choices, file uploads, action budgets. So the date has two um, unique inputs. So we have the date input. This can be used to get information about dates from users. So it's just going to be one date. So for the date range, you can select multiple, like a, a, a more than one date uh, option here. So like what we have here, holiday, give start and end of holiday session. So it's going to be maybe like a week, maybe a date, start date, maybe a Saturday or Sunday, then it ends maybe on a Monday or a Friday. Depends, but you're going to have a range of dates that you can always um, collect that information and make some kind of 
reactions from the server side. Then limited choices. Okay, we're looking at um, aspects where you can use inputs like radio buttons, um, select inputs, and so on and so forth. For the first one, the radio button is going to have a vector that is going to supply the options that you have. You can only so select one. You can select multiple, okay? So for radio buttons, for this one, you can only select one option. So for the select input, depends. There, there's another option where you can select multiple, um, like um, select, it, that's not the example used here, but here for the select input here, you have a drop down that allows you to select um, from the list that you're going to have access to. So um, then we have the file upload. This allows us to have uh, an interface where we can upload a file. So it gave, when you click the button, kind of you see a pop-up that allows you to select maybe from your local system or maybe you want to navigate to some a, a cloud repository or something. So then we also have the action buttons. The action button here, well, the first one, just click me. Then the other one has um, extra arguments from the ID, then the label. Then you also have an icon that is kind of adding more um, kind of aesthetics to your button. So um, I'm, I'm not sure. So I don't know if I can share my app studio now and see my... Able yeah, 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 you Okay. Okay, I will stop sharing. Now. I'm coming. Okay. So. Okay, so you can see my screen now. Yeah. Um, so. so kindly confirm if you can see my screen, my R Studio. Yeah, yeah, we can see. Okay, so um, I'm going to be taking from the information that I have in my quarto here. Then I'll put it in the uh, kind of a mini demo app. So. To make things faster, there is a shortcut that we can use. We can say shiny app to use the snippet. So I'll use this, then I'll be able to run that. So that will be demo app. Okay, so that will showcase this. I hope that is allowed. Yeah, sure, sure. We are displaying the, the content of the chapter, so it's normal. Okay, okay. Okay, so okay, so let me then go something soon. Can you add? Okay, sorry. So I think this should cover it up. I'm still then. Okay, so let me just quickly copy some aspects. So for the text input, there's an example here from the book, just like what we saw in the slide. Um, okay, sorry. Okay, so I'll just replace the UI. We we'll have nothing to do with the server side for now. So this is the exam, one of the examples that we have there for the components in the UI. So we have the text, okay? So we have the password inputs and also the text area, which can allow you to have multiple um, statements uh, added on the, on the UI. So for this one, for any of the component or controls that we're using in the UI, just follow it up with a comma. Okay, so you can add multiple 
information. So if I run this um, app, so running the app will be able to kind of get something. So can, I hope you can see the app. Yeah, yeah, we are seeing, we are seeing. Okay, so you can put in your name, like mine is Billy Kiso. So you, that's a text. So the password, you wouldn't be able to see anything other than the dots, dots, dots. So then I can tell you about myself. I um let me just make it fast. Bam Billy Kiso. So I think that. Okay, so this is just what you will be able to do. I can add multiple lines here. I can try to put enter and so on and so on. So that, that's an example of what you can achieve with the um, option of having multiple um, space to add text. So this is the example that I'm going to show you. Then from this slide, we also talk about the HTML uh, or the other side where we get the HTML um, about our app. So for any shiny application that you're going to, I'm going to open, you can open it in the browser. Okay, so this is the browser now. I'm looking at the same app that we saw in the pop-up in the browser. So if you right click, you get to see the HTML side of your app. So shiny application has kind of translate what you have as R code into the web um, language. The HTML, CSS, JavaScript, as you might want to look at it. So this is just to explain what I had, we had on this slide. So, um, okay, I think it's, I'm browsing well now. Okay, so let me take you back to the R Studio. Okay, so um, so this is the, for the first example. So I would make it kind of fast. So for the slider input, let's have a look at that. So, so for those who would want to try their hands on that, so I'll push it in here. So we have the numeric input, okay? Then the slider input now. So the first slider input now we're going to have only one, then this is going to be kind of a range of values. So I, I'll run this again, reload. So opening browser. So I'll take it there. Okay. So this is what we have. For the first one, you can kind of get some values here, or you add the value yourself, maybe 39. So then you can also change some values from the slider input. Here we can have range. So it's not just going to be one value that we're going to have that we can interact with, but it's going to be a range between 19 and 44 now. So this is range value. So I'll go back to, yeah. yeah. Okay, so that's for the slider. Let me quickly get the other info. So this is for the date range. So I think we've talked about that. So. I'll replace this. So just know that the UI is just the same thing. The only thing that is changing here is the input um, controls that we're having. So this is for the date. So then we have the date range. Holiday, when do you want to go for holidays? So let's see what that looks like as well. So let me I'll go to the browser. Let's see. Okay. So we look at, I hope you, please let me know if you don't, you're not seeing my browser or I'm switching from one to another. No, no, so no, this no. is just going to allow you, you can see my browser. Yeah. Yeah. You are good. Okay. Good. Thank you. So I can only select one date here, only one. So, but here I can give a range. Maybe I want my holidays to be between 12th of June and the 29th, that's a lot. So, but help, 
that will be approved. So that's just the range of um, dates that you can select. So you can get all of this information from the server side and be able to make some kind of decisions or interact with the application from what you've selected here. So let's go back into the um, studio. Okay, so I, so can you let me know where I stopped if I'm going for that so that I will go back to the slide. So I think we, I was on the radio buttons. So I would take up that. Copy and paste this. So um, from the book, we also have the select input. So I'll take that as well. So like I said, if you want to have more than one control or input on in the UI, just separate with comma, then we're good to go. So this is going to allow us to select a state name. This is from the R, R, R installation as well. So it's not something, it's a vector that I created myself, but this is a list that is going to give us some icons as well for the radio buttons. And we have the choices here and the selecting input. So I'll run this as well. I think uh, you should like make it outside uh, the radio buttons. It's inside uh, the parentheses. Sir, sir, sorry, I didn't get The select input should be outside, not inside the, the radio buttons. Oh, okay. So, so yeah. then I copy and paste. So I get it. I get it. So yeah. copy and paste issue. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I think I get it right now. Okay. That's the opening and closing. Okay. Thank you so much for that observation. Okay. Saving this. And go back. Okay. 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 So you can see my browser now. So we have the icons attached to the radio buttons instead of the text. So if kind of the users, uh, visual people or users that are kind of okay with visuals or icons, they can see that, okay, the first one is for angry face. Second one is the smiling one. Then the, the last one is upset or something. So for the select input, now you have a drop down. You can select any of the states here. Okay. So anyone, so we can capture this as well. So that is for that. So let me go back. So the checkbox, am I on the slide for the checkbox? So before, was that the last one? Sorry, Ahmed, you still there? Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. Um, okay, the last slide now. Okay. Oh, yeah, the, the last slide is about file input and action buttons. Uh, limited oh, choices, okay. yeah, like the okay, button. okay, okay. I'll go back to the R studio then. Then, um, so okay. So I think I can still go ahead and click um, and showcase the examples for the checkboxes. So I would quickly take this. So I'm going to replace what we have. So, okay. The checkbox group as well. So let me just 
just copy that, then I'll go back to the slide. Okay. So I think this is the last one. Yeah, comma. So I don't get it. Thanks for trouble. Doing that. So that's checkbox group, then the file impute. Um, Okay. Okay. So Rwanda. Oh, okay. Sorry, I have an error there. So I need to get the um the vector containing the information about the animals that are going to be there. So let me just look for that. Um, okay, there is it. So just copy that and you can push that somewhere here. So, okay, let's go to the browser. So, this is what it looks like. So, we have the option for the kind of this checkbox, but this is like an on and off button. So if I select this, I have this and I, okay, no, sorry. We have the checkbox for the cleanup, then another checkbox for the shutdown. So the radio button kind of the on and off, sorry. Don't let me mix it up there. So then the checkbox group now is this. So we have um, multiple information, but for the same control. Then the last one is the file upload. We have a pop-up that we can quickly go through and kind of select something. Select a file, then we'll have that selected, maybe it's going to be a CSV file or something. So this can now be used maybe in analysis behind the scene from the server side, and then you get something about that in the output. So we're going to talk about the output. So, okay. So I think we can go to this slide now. Let me stop sharing. So. Let me take it up from here. I think my internet is kind of stable. I should be able to go through this slide now. Yeah. So yeah, I hope that sure. is okay with you, Ahmed. Yeah, 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 sure. Okay, thank you. Okay, I think the dates finish with them. Okay. Um, there's one more. The action buttons. Okay, I'll take I'll showcase the example my in, from the house to the later. So then what can one output? So like I said, you can have something that is coming maybe from the server side that we want to showcase to the um, users without their input or from the input they've given us, something happened behind the scene on the server side, then we'll give them an output based on that. So one of the outputs, uh, the outputs that we can have is can, can be in a text format, tables, uh, plots, or they can download and be a file from our app. So the first one, the text. So every every output in the UI is coupled with a render in the server. Okay. So note that there are two render functions which behave slightly differently. So we have the first one, the render text. We have the text output from that. So this is uh, connected with the text output that we're going to give or show the user on the UI. Then the render print is attached, is connected with the verbatim text output. So this is going to display in kind of like a console-like um, display, not um, the normal text interface that we're used to. So that is for the verbatim text output. So this is an example for the user interface. So we have the text output, it's going to be yellow, just going to display. 
text out when they when we're talking about outputs, the user cannot change what is inside that. We, they can't change that because that's what we're giving back from the to the users. So then the verbatim text output so kind of SSN as the um, kind of information that is going to be there now. So then the server side now, what we're having here is what we're trying to kind of push back. I am not sure if this is going to be connected with what we have in the UI here, but for the output, what you're going to look at is if this example that we're having here as an ID of text, then we can see that what we're going to have there is going to be information about animals. But in this instance, this the ID here is not shown. So then output dollar sign code is going to be render print and output something like this. But um, it's, it's, we can't connect it. From what we've talked about the UI, it has to be unique. And whatever you have in the UI has to be the same ID that you're going to use to link. If it's going to be the input um, ID or the output ID, it has to be something you can relate with from the server side. So here, I think it's a disconnect. Yeah, example, I hope I'm right, that has been in this slide. So I can't really relate um, what we have here with what we have from on the yeah. UI. Because the ID is supposed to be text here. Yeah. So then the code is supposed to be referenced here as well. So I, I hope that is correct. Yeah, it's correct. Okay, good. So, okay, so they have to, uh -huh. so the, the ID is what you use to connect the UI and the server side together. So if it's not available in the UI, then you can't get anything to connect with it from the server side. So thank you, Ahmed. Okay, so I think that's for this output. Okay. So the next one that we're going to be looking at is tables. So there are two options for displaying data frames in tables. Excuse me. So we have the first one, table outputs is for static tables. So you, the render function from the server side is render table. Then we have the second one, data table output. So the render function is render data table. Okay, for dynamic tables. So the example here, kind of, yeah, this relates with each other. So for the output here, table output, we have the ID as DF underscore static. And that's what we have at server side as well. Then data table output, we have the ID as DF underscore this and the same thing here. So that is the example we have. So the third output set of outputs are the plots and the downloads. So the plot outputs, that's the, what we we'll have at the UI side. Then we have the render function to be render plots. So this is an example, the plot output, then the on the server side, output dollar sign this. So then the downloads function is not covered in that in this chapter but we're going to uh, yeah so we're going to come back to it in chapter nine so that is for the download side so before i go into the layout i i would suggest i go look at the r studio then we we'll show what it's like with those output controls and the last um, um kind of Input control that I have, I'm yet to showcase. So let me. So I'll, we are together on the R Studio now. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay. So I think we have done this. So the action button, I didn't include that. 
So for the action body, there are different var um, variations or kind of options that we have. So I don't want to take much of the time. So I'll just copy all the examples from the book. Then we'll be able to see something. Okay. So let me just pick this up. Okay. So this. So open up in the browser. Okay, for the first example, this is click me, nothing is happening because there's nothing kind of reacting to or responding to our interaction from the server side. So we can click and can something is happening here. Then we have a, a different um button now with an, a, an icon. Then the same thing, if you click, there should be a response from the server, but it's just to showcase what we have from on the UI. So then this is another button. Here we're using um, kind of formatting from using the uh, storm classes. So we're going to talk more about the classes and maybe IDs and other stuff. So, but these uh, classes are related somehow to the bootstrap. Um, formats or kind of ways of beautifying your app. So this is a bigger um, button with green color. Then we have the click me as well. Then we have one that actually expands or covers the whole width of your browser or your app. So it's still a button. So I would go back to our student. So the classes are there from the examples that we have from in the book. So the classes are different. We have the BTN danger. That's why we have the red color there. Then we have BTN success. So the first one has just one single class name. Then the second one has double class names. That's two class names separated by space, just space, no comma, nothing. So the ID is there then this one, then the label. So that's for action buttons. So I'll go into the outputs now. So for the text, so here. So that's the example that we are supposed to have in the slides. So I will just push this one here. So like I said, the ID is very key. Whatever you have on in the on this UI side should be something that can be referenced on the server side. So here we have the text output with like it's suggested by Hadley Wickham. Okay, the first argument is going to be the ID. So this is having an ID, input ID as text, then the input ID for this one, the verbatim text output is code. So we can reference that here using the output dollar sign, then the name, the ID for your output controls or from the UI. So for this one, what is going to be rendered there, what's going to be displayed to the user is going to be hello friend. So then for the verbatim text output also is going to be hello friend, okay? So maybe we can change that hello, Maybe because the code selects so say hello geeky friends. Okay. <laughs> okay. So that that might be beautiful. So they won't be offended. So this is it. So the user is not requested to inter is not supposed to interact with this. It's just for us to pass information. So I would run this. Um, I hope I don't have, oh, sorry. I have two server functions, sorry. So that's, I'll go, I'll run that again. So that's the issue with 
copy and paste. Um, I hope that goes well. Okay. So share. I'll open it in a browser. So share my browser. So you can see my browser. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. So this is the difference. You can see this relates to not all people. I think that's okay. But if you look at what we have here, it's like um, what you can see in the console. So that's why I'm giving the example as hello geeky friends. So those who are related to codes. So basically you want to display outputs like the summary of the model or something kind of code like. So that's what we're talking about when talking about variable team. Or I want to give a different example from your side. So um, I'll stop this. So let me look at the next one from the book. Um, okay, I've explained that of the render print. Okay, we are on my R Studio now. So then the table outputs now, I would pick up this example, copy, then change what I have here. I have to take everything. Okay, um, maybe before I take this out, the, from the book, uh, we have um, a kind of a, a, a paragraph there that tells us how to add codes to the server side. So for this example, let me uncomment this out. Uh oh, sorry, Control Z. Okay, so he gave um, I hardly gave an example that okay you can have your query bracket here within the render function, if you are going to have multiple lines of code, okay? But because it's optional. So if I take out the um, kind of the curly brackets, like what we have here, we'll still have it run normally. But if you are going to have multiple lines of code within your render function, you have to use the curly bracket, okay? So for, for if you want to use multiple, you have uh, codes that extend more than one line of code. So that's for that. So let me change this so that we'll have. So for the table outputs now, so there's no question at this point, I'm just, or comments. Um, I'm, sorry, this is my first. No, no, you are good, um, you are good. Just, just take. Okay, thank you. Um, that we have. Uh, so. Okay. Yeah. So try just to finish in okay. the next. Okay. Good. Thank you. So this is the output now. So the first one is the static um, table. We don't. We can't interact with it. So the second one is for that's the data table output. Here we can search. Maybe I want to search for in. The value, something like that. So I can search through, I also can kind of sort maybe up, down, kind of um, just manage your, um, the information you have in the table. So you can also check on the number of entries that you want. So if I refresh, so I can change the number of entries that I want here. So it can give me up to 50. Okay, so this is just 32. So I can reduce that maybe to 10. Okay, so I would have only 10 rows. Okay, so and so on and so forth. So that's the, uh, you can do more. So it depends on the options that are available. So I'll go quickly back, okay, stop that. So the next one, the plots, so that that would take us to the end. So this is the example that we have. So 
So, so this is the plot. It's static, but you can have interactive uh, plots. Uh, that's for another session. So this is the plot that we're going to have here. So um, for the um, download, we'll be talking more about that in chapter nine. So this is the slide that I would have used. So sorry for the delay, and um, I hope the next session wouldn't be like this. So thank you. No, no, you are. It was great. Like, so thank uh, you. Thank you for the time. Now, uh, if, uh, I would like to like show you some say like the similarities in Python, so that we do some uh, like differentiation. So let's let me quickly. So I will use like Shiny Live, which is like a platform for playground for for PyShiny. Let's see. Instead of me like writing code or uh, uh, just training my uh, my VS code, let's try this one. Okay. Um. So there. Yeah. Let's. Let's go to the the components, the UI components that we just just to Kisi thankfully discussed in this chapter. Uh, we have the same in the documentation, uh, but in a visual, more visual way, without code, and you could like go to every one of them uh, independently and see every one of them in action. So we have an action button, action link, checkbox, checkbox group that we have talked about. The date range here as well. Uh, I could try it, of course. Uh, it's, it's the same as, as our, our shiny one. Uh, the date selector, numeric input, uh, the password field, radio button, select, select single or select multiple that we talked about. Um, so yeah, the input, the inputs uh, UI, you will find it here as well. And if you want like to see the, the code for it, you just click this arrow button and you will see the the code besides the shiny lab version, which is the what is like um, what is using here to, to demonstrate uh, PyShiny. And um, yeah, that's about the, the input. For the outputs, you see that we have a data grade, data table, an image, and a map, plot, matplotlib, and plotly. So we have like two lab libraries in Python. We have uh, Seaborn as well, plotly and matplotlib. I think the plotly one is exist in uh, uh, similar to our version, roughly. Um, and this is a verbatim text that we used and here is as well as called something called the value box. Uh, and you see, if you see the code, you see that it's the same like structure. You'll see that UI dot uh, page flowed and then UI dot value box. And we have some parameters that we are passing to the, 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 the value box function. Same, you see the similarity that you, the, we have an app UI instead of the UI, just UI in, um, uh, uh, you could name it UI as well. Um, and the server part, there is none here, but you can add as well. Um, so this is just uh, the UI part. Um, so yeah, this is the output and you have a model notification progress bar and not and tool tips. So the progress, yeah, I think this is, this will be discussed in other chapter in, in Master in Shiny, where if you, if you press compute, you'll see that we have a progress bar. If you see, if you press show, show notification, it will show a pop up, small pop up, to see it more visually. Let's go into the shiny live one, and yeah, just look like this. So this is the warning. And by the way, we will talk about this bootstrap um, classes that is used to, to style the, the output of, of buttons, of, 
or text or any anything in the page. Um, but yeah. So if we take like let's let's go to the example. Like we have a playground in Shiny in PyShiny, which is like the Shiny Lives uh, editor that we that I talked about. Um, so you could write code in, uh, online and see its result without you having a, an a, an editor in your machine. So this this actually be pretty cool. So if you change here the the slider, the the it's uh, it it multiplied by two, and give it give the result in uh, um, a text, and this text is. Um, uh, it's, it's just a text uh, output. Um, if you go to, let's go into another one that really have, and um, this was working, let's see. So this, these are examples in PyShiny that you could look at. Now this is, uh, by the way, this is using Shiny Express, uh, which is different than Shiny Core. Um, I think the native way of doing Shiny apps is Shiny Core. Uh, it's more similar to um, our Shiny than Shiny Express. So let's see an ex a Shiny Core example. Let's see. Of course, we have a layout. Let's go to the layout pretty quickly. We have enough bars. Uh, so you have navbar in top, navbar in bottom, and a sidebar in left and right, uh, a sidebar within a card, um, and have tabs. This is a very advanced, like some advanced stuff that we will touch on, I think, in Master and Shiny, but in later chapters. Uh, this is uh, like the more layout that we have in Shiny. Um, but let's see, because we talked that we, we in, in our shiny, let's go into our shiny. So our, the our shiny one, we have like some, some something like um, the fluid row and fluid, um, let's see, let's go to the R one. I think it's, Layout here. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, this is this is how we doing layout in Chinese. This, this layout comes that I think this is new to uh, to Chinese that. Uh, we have like uh, a, a, something called a page fillable where we use it to uh, like build uh, as like row based structure. And um, the thing that build layout on Shiny, it's uh, is bootstrap. It's built on top of bootstrap grid system, which is based, based on uh, like dividing the page into columns and rows and like lay, laying out stuff based on this layout, like in first row, have the first column have this, this, uh, this, um, for example, this side bar, and in this, in, in second row, which is um, the best, more bigger one, we have the content or the main content, something like that. Um, we'll touch on a, 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 a lot about the layout stuff, but not now, uh, like in later chapter. Um, so yeah, this is the similarities between the shiny component UI and um, shiny, shiny, shiny for Python and shiny for R. It's pretty like very, like very, very similar. If you if you know the 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 shiny one, shiny for R one, you will definitely know this. Uh, the because it's it's just, it's just the name convention syntax and syntax. If for for example output text input action button it's the same but with different syntax. Um, 
uh, in R, you you say you see it's using a camel case. Uh, in this, we we using the, like uh, the underscore to naming the function, and yeah, I think this is like pretty quick brushing like about for um, the code. Is it deploy? Is it deployable to the same as in R? Yeah, uh, it is deployable. Yes, and um, I think the people are building stuff with. Um, with Shiny Live now and deploy it. Uh, if you're talking about Shiny Live, of course. Uh, if you talk about the normal Shiny apps, uh, it's of course it's uh, deployable. Uh, you have like the same options as, as Shiny R uh, to deploy apps in Shiny uh, for Python. And I actually encourage you to to dive deep into the, um, the documentation of, of uh, R Shiny and Python Shiny. Uh, you will find like a, a very good similarities and uh, very essential or uh, stuff that explained in like very like simple way to to put it, um, and a lot of examples with pictures and stuff. So yeah, I can I encourage you to uh, if if you have a chapter and uh, you want to dive deep into the chapter, start by. Uh, taking a look on the documentation on what is explained in that chapter. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, I hope that was useful. And uh, in the next one, uh, I think we have in in the sheet who is will present. Yeah, I think Vani Makor will take the basic reactivity. And um, of course, if you if you need help or to discuss this, because this is very essential uh, chapter for us to, to understand. So I hope everyone like um, read it well and um, try try examples using it um, before we before we meet the next month. So thanks for everyone for for attending and thanks for Paul Kiss for uh for presenting today and hoping you had a good day thank you. and see you later. See you guys. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. See you next week. Bye bye. Yeah. Thank see you. you.